Uh, I think the job to be done for for us, big picture wise, is to find a way to make ag a a bit more resilient to to those those big changes. Welcome to Ag Bioscience, the number one podcast in the world for innovation in food, animal health, plant science, ag tech, and agriculture. Here is your host, Agrinova CEO Mitch Frazier. Welcome back to Ag Bioscience. The Economic Policy Institute estimates there are 2.4 million employees in U.S. agriculture, and Purdue University finds that 40% of new ag jobs go unfilled. One entrepreneur is turning to computer vision, artificial intelligence, and robotics, even a little autonomy, to try to address these challenges in agriculture. And he joins us now, Mike Jacob, founder of TerraForce. Mike, Welcome to Ag Bioscience. Mitch, thanks for having me. It is amazing to see you here. Amazing the work you're leading. Mike, you and I have got to know each other here over the last couple of years. You got to give us perspective on this market that you are seeking to solve at TerraForce. Yeah. So the, the farm labor market, a big chunk of that is uh, H-2A, ag labor, ag visa laborers. Um, the federal government sets the wage rate and, and these guys are expensive. Now, to be clear, they they earn their keep. Right. Uh, it's it's brutal work, uh, especially with the melon harvest. These guys are picking up watermelons up out of the dirt. Um, but it's it's very expensive. I, I think this year we saw a dollar forty, dollar thirty nine increase in the hourly wage for those wow. guys. Uh, so farmers are farmers are really feeling that, and that's the that's the acute issue with with those types of wage increases year after year, plus the compliance burden, <clears throat> it makes it tough for our farmers to compete with imported fruit. I think when you look at this uh, applying innovation to tackle labor, we, we go back to John Deere, right? In the 1800s, when, when John became, you know, blacksmith John to John Deere, juggernaut of agriculture, it was really the same idea of, hey, look, I see a problem. There's a high degree of labor utilization how do we make this more efficient? He created a plow. You're creating something entirely different, but the same core, identify the problem, create a solution exists. How does this new era of artificial intelligence, of autonomy, of computer vision, how does that shape this innovation cycle and just the speed in which these innovations can come? Yeah, I think any solution, whether it's the plow or the automated harvester, is only as good as the problem it solves. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that the artificial intelligence does for us is it compresses the development timeline and the amount of resources we have to allocate to get there. Um, sure, somebody could have developed a, an automated melon harvester a decade or 20 years ago, but the amount of resources it would have taken would have been completely unreasonable. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of solutions like this where, where folks are able to make a play in kind of a narrow rifle shot into the market that they wouldn't be able to make before. Well, let's let's spend some time there because this rifle shot that you're making right now focused entirely on watermelons, melons at large here in Indiana. You're doing some work. Give us give us a view. What is TerraForce? How are you solving the challenge of labor in India? Yeah, so TerraForce provides automating far farming services to farmers. Um, so we've, our machine, uh, as you've mentioned, uses robotics and artificial intelligence. We'll drive the field and we'll either take things out of the field and put them in the machine, harvesting fruit, or take things from the machine and put them in the field, planting out live plants. Mm. Both of those are really intensive. So that's what TerraForce does. We do that as a service. These machines were, were really early on in development. They're, they're quite complex, um, they're not going to be to a place for a few years where we can just hand over the keys to a to a grower. I, your, I, I love how elegant your description of the solution is, but y you got to give folks a view. I mean, you and I have spent time in watermelon fields. I mean, how it's done today. You see these watermelons that are out in the field. If they're if the white side is turned up, it's time to pick them. I mean, it, it's hyper, hyper manual. Yeah. When I moved to Knox County in 2015, I had never seen fruit harvested before. And I was just shocked the first time I, I saw it done. Um, the process is 
melons are grown, you, you'll have a bed of six rows, then a, then a rye strip that the harvester drives on or the school bus drives sure. on. They take old school buses, cut the sides out. They've got a handful of men on either side of the bus picking up the watermelons and um, it's kind of like a bucket brigade. They toss the watermelons. It's all manual. They stack them in the bus manually. Uh, then back at the packing shed, most growers are pulling them out manually and they go into the bin manually. You know, maybe that was fine years ago when labor was $10. You had high schoolers doing it for five bucks an hour. Uh, now that that labor is nearly $20 an hour plus right. another four or five in compliance fees, this this is becoming less and less feasible, but it's it's very labor intensive and it's it's hot, brutal work. This happens right. in the summer, uh, out in the field, no shade. It's it's tough. You looked at, I have to imagine, a lot of different things. I mean, you're an accomplished engineer. You could have done anything. Why focus? Why focus on melons? Yeah. So, uh, you, and I did look at a number of things. I bet. Uh, as, as you know, Mitch, I had, a, had an engineering company previously, sold that in, in 23, and I was looking at a few other things and like, boy, this just doesn't feel like meaningful work. What can I do that has an impact locally? Mm. The county in which I live is the number two county in the U.S. for melon production, leading county in the state for ag receipts. Um, so that, that felt like a good, good place to have an impact. And these, these growers, these producers, um, you know, these, these, are, these are folks I know, do business with. Their kids and my kids are friends. We go to church together. I, I coach their soccer teams and things like that. So um, that felt like a really good problem to solve, knowing that I could have an impact for the, the people around me. As you navigated that, I think this is one of the greatest challenges that every entrepreneur faces is, yes, you could do it. Yes, you see market opportunity. But I think that... The, the real kernel, if you will, is, gosh, what, what of these problems do I solve? Right. And so how did you, how'd you isolate? Hey, I'm going to do, I'm going to do harvesting. I'm going to do, you know, off a truck or on a truck. Yeah. Um, well, this was really producer led, uh, to borrow a phrase from, from Agrinovis. Um, labor is melon farmers and farmers in general, their, their most acute problem. Right, they they can't get enough yeah. of it, really, and it's expensive when they can get it. Um, so that's that's kind of how we arrived at that at that piece of the puzzle. Is we we looked around and said, what's the what's the biggest hairiest problem here? And it was labor. I love it. Just uh, the the idea of being producer led, being customer focused, letting that lead you to the future. We're going to take a look at what's ahead for TerraForce and where the product stands today. We'll do it right after this. Ag Bioscience is supported by Indiana Farm Bureau. From berries to dairies, from crop advisors to data analyzers, Indiana Farm Bureau is at the forefront of the top issues impacting Indiana agriculture. No matter your role in the ag industry, Indiana Farm Bureau membership means you'll always have a champion and an advisor. And because so much of your time is focused on your own enterprise, it's also good to know Indiana Farm Bureau is always working to fight for the future of agriculture. We come together to advocate for rural viability, the protection of property rights, competitive tax policies, and against burdensome regulations. Whether our members need a door opened, an impact in public policy, or an ally to strengthen their communities, Indiana Farm Bureau is there. We are the unified voice for all agriculture. To learn more about the benefits of Indiana Farm Bureau membership, go to infb.org. Welcome back to Ag Bioscience, talking with Mike Jacob, the founder of TerraForce. Mike, we've talked a lot about the problem to be solved, the job to be done, that you are bringing a solution to melon producers. Give us an idea. Where is the product today? The product today. So we're recording this uh, in early February. Um, the product today is in pieces scattered across <laughs> Knox County <laughs> and with, with various vendors and, and fabricators. Um, so with hardware, you know, you've got some stuff that's, that's specialized, long, long lead time. So we started sourcing that back last November, December. Those things are being built. Some of them probably shipped today. Um, so between now and the time that this episode airs, we'll get all that stuff bolted together. Um, 
and try it out. It's Indiana, so we'll probably try it out on basketballs because watermelons are hard to get right now. Perfect for March. Yeah, March Madness. <laughs> Perfect for March. Mike, Mike, when you talk about this and you say it's scattered in pieces, I, I've seen a couple pictures of the operation, one of which the Ag Bioscience podcast was on the dash of your truck. I remember that well. I mean, this is how you're bringing this to market is it's make a tweak, try it in the field, make a tweak, try it in the field. And you have a bunch of really smart producers who have come alongside you. What are you hearing from those producers and what are some of those adjustments you're making? Yeah, the th big thing we hear from producers is when will this be ready? <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> yeah, um, so some of the adjustments we're making, uh, I should admit this publicly, but when I first set out to do this, I didn't actually know that you couldn't just gobble up the entire plant like you do with corn and beans. I grew up on a, on a small farm and I thought that was the way everything sure. was harvested. Um, so we learned a lot from producers last January and February. Um, kind of the, one of the, I'd say right now, the questions are becoming more nuanced from producers. Like Great. what, what do we do if, when it's muddy and we need to wet brush? Um, what are we going to do from a compliance perspective? Uh, how many, how many grades and sizes can you sort stuff, stuff like that? Um, not the the big picture problem, but the, but the little pieces that are very important to solving it. Yeah. Small, small things make a big difference. And those time. details matter every time. And especially in production, small details, you have been really humble to this point. I think if, if I were in your seat, I would have come in like Kool-Aid man and burst through the wall and said, <laughs> Hey, we just raised capital. You just raised capital, Mike, from a lot of these folks who are supporting you share more about the raise. Yeah. So we're coming off an oversubscribed round, which is, which awesome. is awesome. Um, so that, that feels, that feels really good. Uh, a lot of local support, uh, in That's that great. round guys that have seen this problem. Um, a lot of them have picked melons themselves. They, they understand the severity of the problem and have faith in the, in the solution we're bringing to market. The, the investor that every entrepreneur wants really smart money. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've got that. Uh, all of our investors bring bring more to the table than, than just money in a very real sense. Um, you know, what, what can I help you with right now? Hey, I'm an expert in this. You're not, can I do this for you? So we've, we've got, we've got great investors. Ah, oh, it's so good. And you are, you are no stranger to this idea of how do we solve really complex problems? You've built businesses. You were a forensic engineer and <laughs> I, I, I have to imagine, uh, Figuring out how to pick watermelons is a little different than forensic engineering. Uh, how is how are these two worlds coming? To, how is your past as a forensic engineer shaping you as an entrepreneur to go solve a real problem here in ag? Um, so forensic engineering is kind of like being the coroner. Like you show up when something has gone very badly. So that time served as an example of what not to do mm. and how not to behave as an organization. These a lot of these organizations that have bad product, that have failures, those, those failures, I don't want to say they don't happen by accident because they are accidents, sure. but the organization, it, it, those types of things become inevitable because of the culture of the organization. That's probably the biggest thing I've learned from that experience. Um, on the flip side, I got to work for some great organizations and see how to build product right most notably right down the street here at Allison Transmission. Those guys built a world-class product, had lots of great mentors there, That's and great. really learned the right way to do stuff. That's ah, so good. Mike, there's so many things we could dig into. The, I'm, I'm fixated right now on a book called Competing Against Luck. Clayton Christensen, the late Clayton Christensen, wrote the book. A amazing, amazing book on jobs to be done. Uh, what... What are the jobs to be done in economy and how will a consumer pull that product that you make into their life to solve a, a problem, to, to do it, to tackle a job? You've spent some time now in ag. You spent some time on a dairy farm in Vigo County or just south of Vigo County. You grew up in, in the ag world. You're back in the ag world now. It, outside of TerraForce, what is the what is the job to be done that's not being done today that you have, gosh, that that we need to solve that i think as a whole and this this is really hard to do 
agriculture maybe needs to be a little bit less optimized. And I say that mm. because when when we're as as a nation of farmers uh, and ag in general, when we're so optimized and so specialized, we're very susceptible to disruptions. So I think the job to be done and the war in Ukraine, I think, highlighted some of yeah. this. Uh, I think the job to be done for for us, big picture wise, is to find a way to make ag a a bit more resilient to to those those big changes. Do you think that's a? I mean, it's a little bit like a portfolio balancing, right? Of sure, you can't have all small cap stocks and you can't have right. all bonds. It's got to be a allocation. Yeah, although I'm I'm pretty far in and uh, high risk stuff myself right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed you are. He is Mike Jacobs, CEO of TerraForce. Mike, thanks for spending time with Mitch, us. Mitch, thanks for having me. And congrats on all the momentum. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us on Ag Bioscience. You can get the latest Ag Bioscience news and insights from discussions just like this by subscribing wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget, while you're online, check us out at agronovusindiana.com. On behalf of the entire Agronovus team, I'm Mitch Frazier, saying thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you real soon. Ag Bioscience is a podcast by Agrinovus Indiana, hosted by Mitch Frazier, produced by Kayla Chittister and Fabian Rodriguez, photography and design by Kaylee Kerr. If you like today's episode, subscribe, rate, and review so we can bring you more conversations just like this. Get all episodes of Ag Bioscience at agrinovusindiana.com. <laughs>